Now at 530. I really don't know where people will go. They will have to choose another pharmacy and there isn't one close around here. It's happening again. Another community is losing its go-to pharmacy. We look at their alternatives. This is becoming all too familiar news as we have tracked one pharmacy after another, closing their doors across Ohio. We take an in-depth look at what makes a pharmacy desert and what happens to the people who live in one. Plus, why does this keep happening? A new FTC report shines some light on this rash of closures affecting people nationwide. So we start in Lorraine, where a neighborhood pharmacy shut down, leaving those neighbors there wondering what's next. Today is the last day for the pharmacy counter at a Rite Aid on the city's south side. It is one of dozens of similar stores to close all around Northeast Ohio. News 5's Catherine Ross has a look at what this means for the people who rely on them. The corner of Grove and East 29th in South Lorraine is a regular stop for Nick Selva to pick up his prescriptions. I gotta take all these pills every day and my wife makes sure I do everything. Now signs dotting that corner announce the inevitable. I was shocked. You know, this place has been here for quite a while. The pharmacy counter closed Thursday and the rest of the Rite Aid store will shut down next month. So we're gonna have an empty building there and there won't be a service for individuals in the community. It's one of the dozens of Ohio Rite Aid locations slated to close since the company declared bankruptcy in October. Just this month, court filings show Rite Aid is closing 20 additional Ohio stores. Prescriptions here will be rerouted to another pharmacy two miles away. People, I think it's going to be rough. The store closing here in the rain is part of a larger trend, and it's one that experts tell me affect neighborhoods like this the hardest. The margins are pretty small. You know, they're the average retail margin is like 2%. Keys Western Healthcare Finance Professor J.B. Silvers tells us struggles in the pharmacy industry are years in the making. He says many companies expanded too quickly. They also face competition from big box stores and the middlemen pharmacy benefit managers who negotiate prices between pharmaceutical companies, insurance providers and retail pharmacies put even more strain on profit margins. They're going to look at every place they can save money. And one of the places is clothing, closing low performing stores. He says those are typically in neighborhoods where customers have less money to spend. In this working class part of Lorraine, census data shows families make about $37,000 in household income. Some neighbors worry they're not only losing their local pharmacy, but also local jobs. I'm just sorry that they're sorry that they're closing stores down and, and very sorry that they decided to choose this one to close down. Silver says the industry is evolving and insurance covered telemedicine and prescription delivery could eventually help bridge the gap. But neighbors say it's a challenge for communities like this. This is a problem and the real subtext here is that nobody seems to have the answer. In Lorain County, Rite Aid locations in Elyria and Grafton are also slated to close in the coming weeks. In Lorain, Catherine Ross, News 5. And if you're having deja vu, that's because we just told you about this same thing happening in another greater Cleveland community. Last week, we took you to Cleveland's Mount Pleasant neighborhood, where a CVS is set to shut down one week from today. Community leaders rallied together in hopes of saving that pharmacy at Kinsman and MLK Drive. A local pastor telling us that there was no big announcement. Rather, customers were told as they came into the store and prescription transfers were already underway. They told me I can't get my prescriptions in the middle here. Because I, I got my last ones here already, so I got to go to Shaker. So when I need it, if they don't change, don't close it, I have to go up there and get it. This CVS location is next door to a senior housing building. CVS told us its decision to close this location was, quote, a difficult one. And organizers of that rally last week said the loss of the CVS in Mount Pleasant would create a pharmacy desert in the community. So we wanted to take a closer look at exactly what that means. According to the magazine U.S. Pharmacist, a pharmacy desert is created when residents can't access a pharmacy within 10 miles. But it says pharmacy deserts can also be based on the number of pharmacies per 1,000 residents. The consequences, according to U.S. Pharmacists, can be dire. Pharmacy access can determine whether someone is taking their medications consistently. If they're not, that can lead to poor health outcomes, increased ER visits and hospitalizations. And it's a major source of waste in the U.S. healthcare system. The magazine says $100 billion is spent every year on avoidable hospitalizations. So 
why do we keep seeing this happen in our communities? We heard from an expert last week who put a lot of the blame, as Catherine said, on pharmacy man benefit managers. Well, the companies who negotiate drug prices or pharmacies, that's who that is. But an FTC report says that they are profiting at the expense of patients by inflating those drug costs and squeezing pharmacies. Here's Scripps News correspondent Dan Grossman. This is Rizotriptan. It's a migraine rescue med. This is Giovanna Berno. She's 26. This is gabapentin. This is also for migraines. Um, doxifen. This is for sleeping. And it will soon become clear that her daily assortment of medications is nothing short of taxing both on her mental health and wallet. It's around four to five thousand dollars without any insurance applied. Giovanna lives with a condition called transverse myelitis, and it takes 24 medications each month to manage it. I get to know my pharmacist really well because I see them like every month. But Giovanna is just one of the millions of Americans like Kevin Traeger and Chris Garcia who feel the burden of their diagnoses and the finances behind them. Yeah, $10,000 um, per treatment. So it can get real costly real quick. This week, the Federal Trade Commission released a report showing the impact of pharmacy benefit managers, third parties that negotiate drug prices between pharmacies and insurance. Many times, these PBMs will charge insurance a higher cost than it charges the pharmacy, keeping the difference for themselves as they pass on the higher cost of drugs to the patients they're supposed to negotiate on behalf of. One in three people in this country cannot afford to pay for their prescription drugs. Merith Basie is the executive director of Patients for Affordable Drugs and points out the difficulties so many in our country face. According to Congress, Americans pay more for their meds than any other country in the world. The FTC report also shows these PBMs only widen that gap, as 30% of Americans report rationing or skipping their meds due to high costs. It's something all three of these folks have dealt with at one time or another, while they wait for insurance or worse, can't afford a prescription. Because whether or not I can go on a trip depends on whether or not I have enough medication for it and if I can get the medication where I'm going. In Traeger's case, he says the deal his PBM negotiated with insurance forced him to switch his insulin prescription he'd been taking for years, leading him to take too much. When I, when I started taking this new insulin because my insurance company told me I had to, 32 units was too many. So I was overdosing on insulin when I first started taking the new brand. The FTC's report shows as these PBMs merge, it only makes the situation more problematic as the six largest pharmacy benefit managers manage 95% of the prescription filled in the U.S. It leaves patients like Giovanna, Kevin, and Chris at their whim, both physically and financially. When you have a middleman that's kind of controlling the cost and it definitely, you know, puts certain people in a more precarious situation. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Denver. And Scripps News reached out to the Pharmaceutical Care Management Association for a comment on the FTC's report. That's the governing body for pharmacy benefit managers. So far, there's been no response.